Let's look into the Torah and study it together. I did three videos about the Babasali. Now this is going to be the last one. But I want to say it to those who criticized me openly and as a result of that I believe several of you have stopped watching my videos, which is fine. I didn't make the videos to become popular. I made the videos to convey truth. If the truth hurts, too bad. I said in my video that the Babasali refused to stay overnight in Ashkelon. That's true. You can look it up in his biography. Very famous biography about the Baba Sali. Baba Sali was very close to the Lubavitcher Rebbe, a dear personal friend. In fact, one of his nephews is Meir Abu Sera, who is Abu Chatzera from the same family, and can testify firsthand to the friendship and the love between these two giants. Why did the Baba Sali? not stay overnight in Ashkelon. It wasn't just because the Rav of Ashkelon said, thank God we have no Hasidim here. What the Rav perceived was that differences in ideology had gone beyond ideology and had become derision and hate. And that is something that he could not stand. He could stand differences in custom, differences in opinions, but not divisions that indicated hatred. And that's why he wouldn't stay overnight in Ashkelon, and why, I'm going to tell you, he wouldn't stay overnight in Lakewood, despite the fact that there are many Hasidim who live in Lakewood. And the reason is as follows. I didn't call Rav Cutler any names. I was mistaken about the statement he made. I asked an apology. I was mistaken. However, I didn't call him a name. I didn't say anything bad about him. I didn't call him a Russia. I didn't call him stupid. I didn't call him ignorant. I didn't call him anything else except that he said something, which I thought he said, that was divisive. Turns out he didn't say that. I'm wrong. He's right. But you out there, including somebody that calls himself the Yossi Rubenfeld, who's some pipsqueak, who thinks that he can analyze everyone and determine their station in life, who said disparaging things about the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Let it be known to all of you out there. I live in the Detroit area. There are several families who've had many children and grandchildren today only through the blessing of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, who are not Hasidim, but they're Jews who needed a blessing and got the blessing and had children, many children, and many, many more grandchildren as a result. People in Detroit know that the Rebbe's blessing worked. How could someone from Detroit question the holiness of the Lubavitcher Rebbe? The answer is, ideology has become transferred into hate. And when you transfer it into hate, you lose your perspective of what is true. The Rebbe was a tzaddik, and the Rebbe, in my opinion, was a Tzadik Hader. I know for a fact, I spent some time in Tveria. There were Jews there in Tveria who were, there was one who was married to an Enikel of Rabbi Leo Lapin, Lapian, and a Talmud of his by the name of Menashe Korman. Menashe Korman, I hope he's still alive, now going back, to 1968, 44 years ago, told me 
he was a Talmud in Kfar Hasidim. And Rabbi Yol Lapian had a set of Kisavim, of writings, that he kept under lock in a shtender. And he would read them assiduously, diligently. When he went on vacation one time, they opened, they picked the lock, and discovered to their shock and dismay that the writings were from the Lubavitcher Rebbe. I also heard from a grandson of his, I'm telling you my own experience, a grandson of his came to Kfar Chabad to see a colleague of mine who's a Rosh Hashiva now in, in Melbourne, his name is Rav Binyamin Cohen, he was a good friend of his in Lakewood, in uh, Gateshead. And he, he was this young man, I don't know if his name was Lapian, but he was a grandson of Rab Lapian. Leo Lapian. The Leva Leo. And he told me that Zaydit told him once that every single Sefer that had ever been published to that point, I believe it must have been either 67 or 68, when he told me this, that every single Sefer that was ever published by Lubavitch and Chassidus, he had learned in its entirety. However, because it was words of Kabbalah, he told him not to study it till he was 40 years old. Does that sound to you like that the Lubavitcher Rebbe was a Rosha, Chas Sholem, or that he was ignorant? If Rabbi Leo Lapian was learning his Sikhs, just imagine how great a person the Rebbe was. Forget about Chassidish Rebbe if he was Mashiach, not Mashiach, just as a person. If Rabbi Leo, I saw Rabbi Leo, Leo Lapian. I had the schuss of seeing him for a couple of days. Can you imagine what the Rebbe must have been like for Rabbi Leo Lapian to spend his days reading the Rebbe's Sikhs in for Sifrei Musar. That's what he did. He, he read it at that time. In Mashur, he read it at other times as well. What are you thinking when you say things that are stupid? When you say things, you attack me for saying things that are heretical. I didn't say anything heretical. You, on the other hand, were Mavaza Talmud Chochem. Not me. Lubavitch Rebbe. A true Talmud Chochem. And a true Tzaddik. And I'm not sure there's anything you can do other than go to the oil and ask Mechila. 